Once upon a time, we were told that part of us wasn't acceptable, and we believed it. The end. Or is it? Really, it's the beginning. The beginning of a journey to becoming more authentic. I stand before you on this stage as lesbian tomboy, brilliant, beautiful, judgmental, sensitive, and emotional. What do all these things have in common? They're my shadow. They are the gifts that I have not fully stepped into and embraced, and they are the parts of me that I have varying degrees of shame around. And much like the shadow that you see with me on stage, it's with me everywhere I go. If I move left, it moves left. If I move right, it moves right. And if I hunker down low and try to cover it up and escape it, I can't. It's with me everywhere I go. When I was researching for this talk the definition of shadow that resonated the most with me that I wanted to share with you, I found a definition by Carl Jung. And many of you may know him as one of the fathers of psychology, and he describes our shadow as the inferior aspects of our psyche that we're not too proud of. In the book Love and Awakening, author John Wellwood uses the metaphor of a beautiful castle to describe the world within us. So imagine you're a little kid, and you're running and frolicking through the long hallways of this castle, and you love this castle. You're proud to invite guests over to come and see every room. You don't care if it's a bedroom or a bathroom or a cellar. You are excited to show them what exists beyond that door. And then one day, somebody tells you that one of your rooms doesn't quite fit in your castle. And so you close the door on that room. And as time goes by, more and more people tell you that this room is too much or this room isn't good enough. So you close that door and that door. And then you actually forget that those rooms even existed. Slowly, your beautiful castle becomes dilapidated and fragmented. It's now a fixer-upper in need of a lot of repair. Would you believe me if I told you that to truly change the direction of your life, you need to go back into your castle and open up some of the rooms to those, some of the doors to those disowned rooms? Or if I told you that there was freedom in that? Well, let me tell you a story about a room in my castle that I've been opening over the last couple of years. Now, first, let me say, I really didn't want to go into this room. You see, this was a door that I had closed in order to feel safe in the world as a little kid. And that door was the room of self-expression. I was afraid that if I opened this door, I would turn into Humpty Dumpty and completely fall apart and nobody would be able to put me back together again. But I stand before you in one piece telling you this story. Now that door had the sign self-expression on it. When I was a little kid, my grandfather used to tell me that my kidneys were too close to my eyeballs because I cried too much. For those of you trying to make the connection, let me just say your kidneys are part of your urinary system, and from your urinary system, liquid flows. You do the math. Kidneys were too close to the eyeballs. I cried too much. Now, as an adult, we can laugh, and we can think that's funny. But as a little kid, what I heard is, your tears aren't welcome here. And any emotion that makes others uncomfortable around you needs to be locked away and closed behind one of those doors. So that's exactly what I did. Now, I've spent probably thousands of dollars with my counselor over the last couple years to take a look around and walk back into this room. And here's what I've learned. My tears are a gift. I no longer apologize when I cry. Because the fact that I can step into that space and be present with those emotions that are seen as socially unacceptable gives the space for each of you to be there as well. Why does it matter that we open up these doors? Because I believe we were put on the planet to live a whole and fully integrated human experience. When we illuminate our shadow, we give life to all of who we are. If your castle has a thousand rooms in it and you've closed the door on 500 of those rooms, you're only living from half of who you are. What's in the way? I am. 
I'm worried about what you're thinking about me, and you're worried about what I'm thinking about you. And the truth is, neither of us are thinking about each other at all. <laughs> We've bought into our own self-destructive rhetoric and limiting inner scripts. We constantly create more shadows to hide behind who we are. I also think our minds are in the way. So if our mind is the blueprint for our body, in fact, science shows that there are tissues in our brain that define what our lips and other body parts should look like. So if, uh, if we are to live a wholly integrated life, we need to not just stay here. We need to get out of our mind and out of the blueprint and into our bodies and the castle. And we need to go back and forth between there from time to time, not existing in just one or the other, and constantly tracking as time goes by. Remember the door to self-expression that I told you that I didn't want to open? Well, what I can tell you is from getting out of my mind and into my castle, I am now more connected to who I am, which makes me more connected to each of you here today. I'm able to discern from a very authentic place what's right for me instead of living my life based upon what other people think I should be or say or do. And there is a lot of freedom in that. When we open these doors, what will we find? Well, I would love to tell you that they are pristine and look exactly as we left them with ki as kids. But I don't think that's the case. You know when you close the door on a room in a house for a while and you don't go into it and when you finally open it back up, it's musty and it's dusty and it has that not lived in feeling? I think that's a little bit like the rooms in our castle. There's work to do. There's things to dust off. So my invitation to you is to grab the handle on one of your doors and open it even just a little bit. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I still have doors closed in my castle that I'm very afraid to open, but just choose one. The signs on my doors said self-expression and sexuality. Maybe yours say anger or creativity. So my invitation to you, open the door just a crack and see what's there. I have a feeling this new story is going to be different for all of us. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful castle. Thank you.